Hello, my name is Horst Jens. I'm boss of Spielen Programmieren. I teach children how to program open source games and now I show you how to create a very simple vertical shooter game using Scratch. Scratch is a very cool piece of software. You can get it from scratch.mit.edu and there you have objects, sprites on a stage background in a very limited resolution, it's an epsilon, you can see them here and usually you script little commands by moving blocks here around and attach the blocks to each other like uh, with Lego play, um, toy. Now uh, first order of business is to make a welcome screen, click here on this stage and click here on backgrounds and you see here an empty stage with a limited screen resolution you click on edit you come to a little uh, paint program if you do this with kids it's a good um, starting point to get them familiar with this uh, paint program here and now I simply paint the title screen, screen I paint here vertical scooter shooter See, I don't even use the inbuilt scripting uh, text function. Of course, I could do that, but I don't want. Okay, I'm done now. You see here, I use the text function. Now I need to buttons to press them, one to start the game and one to quit the game and those buttons I will not paint here, instead I will use sprites for these buttons. That's simply done. You see already here a sprite, the scratch cat, I will move it to the side and create a new sprite. Um, I don't paint it, I do a already made sprite here called button and very important always give your sprites meaningful names. I call this start button and here under custom, customs I can see um, how it looks. I copy this image, edit it and fill it with another color so to give the impression of a press it down button. That's all. I have now my start button. Maybe I should uh, use the text function now. I write start on it. So start, and you see this is far too big and too, too bold. So I use another size. size. Okay, here you can move uh, text around with these hand icons. It is like square. The square will not be visible later on. So, good, that's done. I can now move my start button here and what I want to do now is I want to create some code so that this start button start to function. Um, I go here to the control icons and always uh, choose this box for starting. It means the game is started by clicking on the green flag here. What I want if the green flag is clicked, I want this start button to become vis visible and I also want him to have his uh, button costume on, not the, also the first one. So, we go here by looks and you go here to show to make sure he becomes visible and that's all. No more scripting needed. Another thing, if this button becomes clicked, then I want him to do something. I want to call, call him an event. event. So, I make here another event controller. When start button clicked, then I can play some sound. Let's try here. Little drum sound. And then he should create the event, a broadcast, the event game start to all other listening functions. So, game start. He broadcast this message 
to every, everyone else. What should happen at game start? Well, for once, uh, I want to get rid of the welcoming screen and instead uh, showing the screen with the actual game inside it. So, when the game is started by the green flag, I want this vertical shooter screen uh, to show. This is called Background Ants. I renamed it to Welcome. And then I import here a new background. I'll take this XY grid. And this is where the actual game shall happen. So, I say here, one click, ok, nothing special. But then, when I receive game start, then it looks, um, switch to background XY grid. And then, when uh, the green color, uh, the green flag is clicked, switch to background. Welcome. Okay, what else should happen? The start button, when he uh, with, um, sent this um, broadcast, he should hide himself. So we will not have him in play. Let's test it out now. Good idea, always save your project because Scratch has a tendency to crash sometimes. So, I click here on the green flag, I have the vertical shooter, and I click on Start, and you hear, hear the sound, and I see here my game. Ok, that was very good. I stopped the script now. Now how can I here start again, I start again, and that's done. So, stop. Next. Now let's do some sprite that is moving around. I go here. I have the cat, but the cat is not uh, good for a vertical shooter. I need something more like a spaceship or an airplane. So I delete the cat, and uh, this time I paint my own sprite. I make it very simple now. I just need some kind of B plane. So this is the body. This is the wings. Yeah, all the wings. And of course, some machine guns and something. So I can later always make a more aesthetic-looking sprite out of it. Here I have it. I can move it around. And of course, I call this B plane. There was a very good game that I played a lot in my youth. It was called Blue Max. Okay, this B plane, I want be a uh, control with the keyboard. I want it to be able to move horizontally and also a bit uh, vertically, but only in the lower half of the screen. You can see here um, the coordinates of the screen. So let's uh, make some script. First script, when I when the game starts with the green flag, the B plane has to hide. Why that? Because if the game starts, I'm at the welcome screen, you remember, and in the welcome screen I don't need yet the B plane, I need it invisible. I need it visible when the game actually starts, when I the game start broadcast message is received and this sprite is one of the sprites that listen and waits for this function so then he should appear show and because it's not clear where he was pos positioned last time the game was played I will position him here you can here always read the, the coordinates of the mouse so I say x0 y-100 and I say, please go to this position, 0, minus 100. Good. Next order of business, I'm making a loop. I will make him now this loop. It has a slot here for a condition to end the game, like if he, the time of the game is running up or, or the game is crashing into too many obstacles. 
and now let's do here some small controlling here with a if close I get a sensor and I'm sensing keyboards not a space key that we will use later for firing bullets but here the left arrow key and if uh, the left arrow key is pressed at the moment then I give a motion command by changing the X coordinate changing the X coordinate by let's say 5 to the right and this if construction I uh, put inside the repeat loop now with the right mouse button I can here duplicate this and put it here, it's a bit tricky, put it here below the other if construction but inside the repeat loop and here I change that to left arrow and then I change x by minus 5 you can see here the coordinates so I will do the rest so as you can see here I worked a bit in advance I made uh, up and down um, key handlers and change the y value. I changed it with smaller uh, values than the x value. So if I play this game, uh, I can move horizontally very fast, but forward and uh, up and down not so fast. So the problem here, I cannot uh, leave the screen. That's actually good. I cannot go down but I can't up uh, too much I don't I want to restrict the player's uh, zone to the lower half of the screen to do that I need here even another another if construct so but with another sensor the sensor remove this sensor and this also I need here to sense the y position the y position and you'll see I cannot place the y position directly in the in the slot here in the hexagon so I need an operator and I, s I will sense if the upper uh, if the y position is below uh, beyond zero so this half this is what I don't want I want the, the the plane, B plane bounds here, so I, I will not allow a y value value greater than zero. If this happens, the y value is it, uh, becomes greater than zero, then I will restrict it and say motion. And now take quick care not to confuse it. I set y to zero. Please note is a uh, important ch uh, change. Here I change y by some value and here I set it. If I do that, let's play, I should not be able to move too, too, too much up. Okay, I see here this is even too far for my taste. I will use minus 10 or something. So, bigger than minus 10, then I restrict it to minus 10. Let's try it again. And yeah, better. Good. So, as you can see here, I painted a bullet. It's more like some kind of fireball. And I painted too big. It, the game would not be much fun if this uh, little B plane can shoot that shy, shy guy very big <laughs> fireballs uh, so I shrink it with your shrinker and I shrink it to a more reasonable size it's always a good idea to start painting big and then shrink so the point of uh, shooting bullets is that I want my biplane to have a machine gun and shoot a lot a really scream of bullets so I called this sprite bullet 1, there will come some more. So what should bullet 1 do? Let's take an easy script. So when clicked, remember the welcome screen, it should hide. Should hide and get out of my way. So and when should it appear? Well, when there is some firing event. But we don't have this event yet. Uh, so let's 
program it. It would be tempting to make here another duplication of this if uh, module and say if key space is pressed, but that's not a good idea because then uh, I would uh, generate a lot of um, keyboard events. So instead I do something else. I use this module here when space key is pressed. That means in reality when the space key is pressed and released again. So it um, it gives a better control of firing. And what I do then? Well, simply I broadcast a fire command. Broadcast, let's say here, broadcast fire 1. So, broadcast fire 1. Who is listening to fire 1? Well, bullet 1 is listening to fire 1. So I can here say, when I receive fire 1, what should I do? First, I should show myself. But where shall I, show my, shall I show myself? At the exact position of the B-plane. So, motion and go to go to the B-plane. What shall I do next? I shall travel upwards. So, let's make a loop. Again, a loop with a condition to end sometime. Repeat until. And here we can say change. We could say, no, um, we could not so go forward because the direction of this is uh, to the right. But we can say change your epsilon position by minus 10. So it will fly upward. And we can say do that until you're touching the edge of the screen. Touching the edge of the screen. If you touch the edge of the screen, then hide. Hide yourself. So, this is a basic uh, script for the bullet. Let's test it out. So, make this here bigger. More fun to play. So, I can and now I press the space key. <laughs> Oops! <laughs> Someone is shooting in the wrong direction. Okay, yes, I need, I need here to change that by 10. So again, and you can see I can shoot upwards. The problem now, um, if I press the space twice, you see what happens? The bullet flies upward, and then I press again, and it gets teleported back toward the B-plane. This is not very satisfying uh, for the player, so I need here a control mechanism. Let's see what I can do. Um, the key is to make an internal variable. A variable is something like a um, little piece of paper where, where you scribble some values. So make a vari variable, and this time make it not a global variable for all sprites, but only a variable for this little bullet sprite and call it busy to indicate that the sprite is busy you see it's here um, painted below this line I don't want it to have visible and busy shall normally shall have a certain value exactly the value 0 so here it is set to 0 and now comes the tricky part when I receive fire one, then I do the f some if else asking. I ask myself, am I busy with flying around? So let's here do an operator, an equal operator. And here, if I'm not busy, so if busy is null, where do I get busy? I simply drag it here. If I'm not busy, then I'm free to be launched from the B-plane. So I simply set myself to 1. Set busy to 1. Set busy to 1 to indicate that I'm flying around. Okay, and 
else uh, I do nothing. So, and now I need here some loop because this is um, done all the time. And I need here a loop to indicate that I'm busy. Not do that here. Yeah, I found it here. I need this forever if loop. That forever if loop comes here and it gets a sensor. I limit that. It controls if busy equals one <coughs> or true if you want. And then he does all this stuff like uh, becoming visible and flying upwards. So this makes, if you come from um, another programming language, not so much sense. I set PC to null and then I ask myself if PC equals 1. Of course it's not 1 because I set it to null. But wait a bit. This runs all the time, like uh, 10 or more times the seconds. And here I get from another program the event um, fire 1, the broadcast message, and I set PC to 1. And now, while this is looping all the time, I, this condition becomes true and I can shoot. Let's test it out. Here, I start. Now, I can shoot. No, no use. But oh, I have now created auto fire. That was stupid. Yes, so why I have auto fire? Because I never uh, set BC to zero again, so I have to do that again after the bullet was traveling all the way up and touching the edge, I set it to zero again. So let's see. I start my game. I can shoot. No auto fire this time. And now I try to shoot twice. And uh, you can see it here better. You can see uh, it's the broadcast is received, but he indicates his busy, so he don't listen to the broadcast and continue flying upwards. That's the key um, to program a lot of uh, bullet sprites. So now it's relatively simple um, to make more sprites. All you need to do is here in the else con uh, condition. Um, broadcast another me message like fire 2. But before we do that I want to make one uh, boss or enemy uh, and make the bullets clever enough to shoot them him down. Let's see. We need a new sprite. I can take any sprite now. Let's see what we have here. Well, we have here Evil, evil robot. So, this is the evil robot boss enemy. I uh, will shrink him a bit. So, and now let's give him some basic script. Yes, he should be a robot. So, let's uh, give him a script. So, when the game starts, remember, then is the welcome screen. So, he should hide. On the other hand, when uh, the game begins, so when the event game start is received, then he should show himself and go to a position, let's say, well this position is not so bad actually, it's minus one three five one one four. Now let's tell him to go to this place. And then he should do something, he should bounce around. So, because he is looking in the right direction, we can make him a little loop. Again, here the condition that I will later specify. 
and let's say move 10 steps and bounce on edge of the screen that only uh, works good if the moving dire direction here is uh, something you want, let's try it out and you see he's bouncing but upside down but you can easily change that here with this little icon now he's bouncing around. Okay, he's bouncing around a bit too fast, so let's let's move him only four steps. Okay, maybe three. Okay, good. And of course, uh, as an evil boss enemy, he will shoot uh, throw bombs at the player. Let's try uh, to create some bombs. Well, I paint one. So he's shooting blue water bombs. That's all at the moment. So that is bomb one. And now let's create an e event that uh, actually let the robot throw these bombs. It would be boring if I have uh, to press a key to throw the bomb. The robot should throw these bombs alone. How can I do that? Well, I can use a random number generator. It's like a dice. And you have that um, somewhere here. The operators. Yes, pick random between 1 and 10 and I can say ok if you have a six sided dice and you throw a one then I will broadcast a message to throw a bomb at the player remember that this loop is uh, looped uh, several times a second so maybe you need to change uh, the numbers here let's make a little if construct no. And then what I do, well I broadcast, uh, but not fire one, that would be silly, I would broadcast bomb one. So, and this I put inside his loop, and now he is all the time um, sing throwing the dice, and if the dice uh, gives the correct number, he gives the command to throw a bomb. Let's continue with the bomb. So the bomb should, you know the drill now, should make itself invisible. Hide. But only at game, um, when the game is started here. On the other hand, when uh, the broadcast bomb 1 is received, the game, uh, yes, it's now the same drill at here, with bullet 1 and you can actually copy copy this so I, co I copy now this whole block of code to the bomb you see I have this now here of course I have to switch here when the bomb ions is received and also I want to copy this uh, code to the bomb yep. away. I have here a variable busy, internal, local variable, but I don't want to go to the B plan. I'm now at the bomb. I want to go to the evil robot and I want to change my Y direction by minus 5. So, let's try to do this out. Game shoot work now. You see he's throwing bombs and I can shoot. Okay. Not so bad. But now it's time to get some scorekeeping um, to destroy the robot or the b-plane if it uh, run into too much bullets or bombs and also to 
create several bombs or several bullets to really rain a bullet storm here. How to do that? Let's begin with the bullets. Um, before I copy this bullet one into several bullets, I want to make uh, this bullet as perfect as possible. And the bullet now needs a mechanism, mechanism to check if the bullet is hitting the robot. You see here, I repeat until I touch the edge of the screen, but that's not correct. Uh, the bullet should also hide if it's touching the robot. So let's make an OR operator here. OR and say touching edge or touching robot touching the robot so and now what happens if it's touched the robot let's uh, ask this here with an if construction so I put that no that was wrong so what is if I touched the robot touching robot well then I think the the player get more score so let's make a vari new variable variable this time a global variable it's called score I indicate that right in a big score and it's visible for all sprites so and I will change score by one the problem is score need to be resetted and I will do that um, here at the start button here I can so say set score to zero okay back to the bullet okay it will change the score by one again the same can be said or nearly the same can be said for the bomb the bomb is trying to hit the player's b-plane so we need here a um, variable indicating how much hilty the b-plane is like a variable called lies let's make a new var variable make lies again I write it big to indicate it's a global variable valid for all sprites so and um, also here that, that was not well let's do it here I set lives to let's say you start with three lives three lives ok you can see them both here So, we have three lives. Now the bomb is checking if it's hitting the plane. So let's do an OR operator. OR, touching edge, OR, touching the plane. So it's touching the plane. Touching the B plane. And again, oh, that didn't snap. So, and again what I do if I um, notice I hit the B plane well I, I make a little control structure here with if if I was hitting the, the B plane so touching the B plane then I will say change the lights change lives by minus one decrease the number of lives ok and now back to the b plane you remember I had here an empty condition well the game runs as long as you have more than zero lives let's say here lives still bigger zero uh, sorry, repeat until, so I must change that repeat until life smaller than 1 oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah Repeat 
it until life smaller than smaller than one and then it's, it's game over I can actually say this loop say game over for two seconds and then I could send a broadcast command to go to a specific game over screen but I'm too lazy to go to that now now let's try to play around a bit and see what happens so I start my game and I have one life let's try to make a score ok so score one and here is a game over Good. That's uh, nearly enough for now. Now, how to make a lot of bullets and a lot of bombs? It's very simple. I click here on bullet one. You see, it's working. And all I have to do is to duplicate the rule bullet one sprite and call it. You guess it. I call it bullet two. Bullet two. And the uh, sole difference here is here I don't listen to fire 1, I listen to fire 2. Fire 2. But who is sending the fire 2 broadcast? Well, bullet 1 here has an empty else construct. So if he is busy, he can as well uh, broadcasting the command fire 2. Fire 2. And bullet 2 is listening, and if it's um, fire 2 receiving, he is spring into action. If bullet 2 itself is busy, he can broadcast the command fire 3, that I must create, it's not existent, fire 3. And who is listening to fire 3? Well, a duplicate of bullet 2 called bullet 3. Bullet 3 is listening to Fire 3 and if he's busy, well, then then nothing. I'm too lazy now to create a fourth bullet. The same goes for the bomb. Now let's try the shooter and I should now be able to shoot three bullets. One, two, three. You see, three bullets. Okay. As an exercise, you try the same with the bomb and have fun programming with Scratch. Bye bye!